Welcome to Honey, Let's Talk, the marriage conversation. My name is David Siveke, your host uh, today. And um, this is a platform on the Church of Uganda online uh, platform where we allow the marrieds talk about things that affect them, that impact them, that improve the marriages. That it, it is a platform supposed to add the value to the marriages that we have because we share best practice. And today um, we have a special guest who's going to talk, uh, talk to us on the topic, God's purpose for marriage. Does God have a purpose for our marriages? Do we come into marriages to, with a purpose? Do our wives find us with a purpose and join us? Do they come with their own purposes? What happens there? Yes, so our guest, our guest today is uh, Reverend Alex Bambale, and he's going to talk to us. Reverend, you're very welcome. Please talk to us. Uh, may God bless you as you share the wisdom he has impacted, impacted in you. God bless. Thank you so much, Brother David, for the invite to this special program uh, talking about marriage, that couples can sit together and talk together about marriage. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that there are so many, so many people that are thinking, am I just here uh, just to have babies and, uh, and that's it? Am I just here for uh just just am i just here for anything and when i come in do i cease to be yes i know that there are many people who are thinking and talking about marriage from their own uh their own understanding and not according to the pattern of the one who designed marriage it's important i have heard of what is happening in some of the countries uh where as people come into marriage, they have a few things to focus on and the things that they are focusing on are the material possessions. Before they enter into the marriage, they first ask each other, uh -huh, so how much are you bringing in and how much am I bringing in? How much do I have that I am leaving out? How much do you have that you're leaving out? So that just in case there is a problem, I have a fallback position that what this, the law will not touch this, the law will not touch this to get it away from me. Now, people are already planning to fail before they even begin because that is not the design of uh, the one who made it. You see, if you're using any gadget, whatever, uh, be it a phone, be it a camera, if you do not look at the instructions, the manual of the one who designed it, you will lose it, you will have lost it. You, you, you will do anything to it. I have a friend of mine who took, who was very excited to, to, to get some equipment from the USA and he just wanted to test it. And it was very expensive, but he did not read the instruction that the power that was required needed to be stepped down from 240, which is our voltage here, to 140 to 110, which is the voltage that is used in the US. And as soon as he plugged it in, he just saw smoke out of his hand, hard earned money. And sometimes people do that with marriage. You get your own thinking, your own design, and you plug it into power. <laughs> and, and as soon as you plug it in, whew, it's gone. It's gone. You have invested so much of your emotions, so much of your life into it, but because you did not follow the pattern, it's gone. So what is the pattern? Marriage is not a contract of just some time. It is a commitment of a lifetime. And because it's a commitment of a lifetime, people need to be careful how they enter into this commitment. And this commitment is designed by God. It's designed to happen between two people. And these two persons agree before the Lord, according to his pattern, to live together in harmony, in both good times and in bad times. And so, God, as the designer of persons, therefore, is the very first uh, 
the, the, the very the, his design of persons is most important that God said let us make man in our own image and likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the earth over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all creation all creatures that move along the ground so God created mankind in his own image in the image of God he created them male and female he created them so God first of all creates human beings male and female and both of them are given responsibility they are created in the image of God first of all and the image of God does not mean that God has a, a, a face like ours it's not a shadow it's not the shadow of God but it is the way you a, 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 an artist is thinking about um, designing a particular thing or an architect is thinking about designing a house and in his mind he has an imagination he has an image of what he wants to create and because he has that image that image follows purpose he first thinks about why am I creating this and so he is going to put everything so that it suits the purpose for which he's going to put it together so that it suits the purpose for which he is creating it are we together uh -huh. so he is creating human beings for a purpose that is why we are made in his image but we are also made in his likeness we are made to be like him to be like god we are not god but we are made to be like god in certain aspects certain aspects we are like god we are different from the rest of creation because we can think we can understand we can we have emotions we we we, we have intelligence uh, different from the, the rest of creation we are the, the apex of god's creation for the purposes of taking care of god's creation on behalf of god harnessing the creation so that it produces what brings glory to god so that is the first place that we want to begin and then god created him male and female and in chapter 2 of genesis um, beginning at verse 18 the lord god said to said it is not good for a man to be alone i will make him a helper suitable for him so god in chapter 2 is explaining is, uh, is, is giving us how the sequence of his creation he began with the man the male and after creating the male he gave him work to do he gave him all kinds of things he gave him he surrounded him with a lot of material possession just to prove a point that uh, material possession and, and and work those things are not what fully fulfills a man they are two other things that a man needs number one most important is that you need God to fill your life fill your life the fullness of God should be your desire and number two is that a spouse would have a special place to fulfill you and so God after Adam had tried to do work had God that God had given him he was not satisfied and God said we shall make a man yeah uh, let's make a woman let's make for him a suitable helper so what does the helper come to help the man with the helper comes to to help the man to fulfill God's purposes together they come to fulfill God's purposes for their lives together and so we, we see that God's purpose of marriage is fourfold. Number one, God uh, put man and woman together 
so that they can be companions. Companionship is that one purpose that God desires for human beings. It, it makes, pleases God when man and woman are, are companions of each other, but they are also complementing each other. So companionship comes with complementation that a, a, the, the man is pursuing God's purpose just as the woman is pursuing God's purpose. He's helping the man as they pursue God's purpose. To fulfill one another is God's purpose. For you to be a friend to your wife or to be a friend to your husband, that is God's purpose. It pleases God. Friendship pleases God. Being companions, being complementary to one another pleases God. That where I am lacking, you are supporting me. Because every human being is, um, all of us as human beings, we are, we are not very, uh, on our own, we are not full. Uh, we are limited. That's what I wanted. To, that's the word I was looking for. We are limited in many things. We are limited in our, uh, in, in our physical ability. We are limited in certain capacities. And so we need one another. So that is the first purpose. The second purpose is uh, recreation. Recreation. Chapter 2 and verse, um, chapter 2 and verse 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Uh -huh. For this reason, a, mother shall, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Adam and Eve were both naked, and they felt no shame. So, recreation. That man and woman um, become one flesh and enjoy life that way. The married bed is a holy place. It's a place of, of God's purpose. It's a place of God's purpose. It's a place of recreation. So that is another thing that God has designed for marriage. For marriage. Outside of marriage, the act of marriage is, uh, is, is shameful. When it is outside, it is shameful. It brings shame. It brings, it brings a lot of brokenness. But in marriage, it's beautiful, it is commendable, it's enjoyable. That's the second one. The third one is co-creation. That out of recreation comes co-creation. God has given us a great opportunity to be co-creators with him, especially in the area of bringing forth children. And why does he want us to bring up children? Uh, in Malachi chapter 2, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 13, another big, another thing you do, you flood the altar, the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because you no longer look with favor upon your offsprings or accept them as with pleasure from, upon your offerings or, your, or accept them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It is because the Lord is witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage. Has not the Lord made, uh, made them one? In body and spirit they are his. And why one? Because God was seeking godly off, off, offspring. So be on the guard and be uh, and keep faith with the wife of your youth. That God has made both man and woman one. Why? So that 
he may raise through them a godly generation. That is another purpose. So when you come together, you come to fulfill another purpose of God, raising a generation for God. Raising a generation for God. And then, uh, so parenting, raising children, bearing and raising children is another of God's purpose that we will have generations that fear God raised up through marriage. The third, the fourth one, is that we are here to reflect the glory of God through marriage. We are here to reflect the relationship that Christ has with his church. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verses uh, 21 all the way to 33. It, it begins the, uh, with, with the fact that because we honor Christ, we should submit to one another. And then he shows how a man should submit, how a wife should submit. The wife submits by respecting her husband. But the, the husband submits to his wife by loving him. So submission is mutual. It is both ways. And so because of this, the, the man, the, 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 this relationship between man and, and woman becomes a reflection to the world of with the, the relationship between God and his church. And so we become witnesses of Christ through our marriage relationship. And therefore, dear friends, these four, with these four uh, parts of the purpose of God for marriage, you come with your abilities, yes. You come with your talents, yes. You bring them into, you bring uh, your, your, your possessions, you bring whatever else you have that God has given you as a steward, by the way. You bring everything into the marriage to fulfill God's purpose. So each one of us, yes, we may have our own career. That is okay, and it should be supported by the other. We should support each other's career. But as we support one another's career, we should remember, dear brothers and sisters, that it, a career is not our purpose. Once you agree to enter into marriage, you have entered into God's purpose. And you must fulfill God's purposes as a person, as a human being, to take care of creation and to bring glory to God as you harness creation. But number two, to fulfill these four purposes, four areas that I've just talked about. God bless you.